Hey, what's up? It's HJ, and welcome back to week three. We are finishing out 2 John. 2 John is literally one chapter long, and we did three weeks in it. Next week, we're going to be starting 3 John, which is another three weeks, six weeks total. So we are going to be getting into a topic that is quite prevalent in the New Testament epistles. Churches are always being warned not to be deceived. There are deceivers around us, and so today we're going to look at who are deceivers, how do we recognize them, and what do we do in light of them, and what happens to a believer when they don't do the right thing. So, for many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh, such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves so that you may not lose what we have worked for, but may win a full reward. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching as both has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting, for whoever greets him takes part in his wicked ways. Though I have much to write to you, I would rather not use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to come to you and talk face to face so that our joy may be complete. The children of your elect sister greet you. So whenever you read a portion of scripture, the first thing you want to do is look through and just think of all the questions. Be nitpicky. Really dig in. So some of the questions I ask is, who or what is the Antichrist? What does it mean to, quote, not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh? What is the full reward? What is the teaching of Christ he's referring to? What does it mean to abide in that teaching? What does it mean to not have God? What does it mean to have the Father and the Son? What does it mean contextually to not give them any greeting? Um, so those are some of the questions I came up with. And then it helps you kind of guide what you're studying. Because really when you look at scripture, you could ask like a bajillion questions because it's so deep. Um, so you just kind of give yourself a little track. So that's those are the questions we're going to be looking at today. All right, so I broke the scripture up just to make it easier to take notes so it's not so cluttery. Um, and let's jump into it, verse 7. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. So this right here where it says those who do this do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh, that is describing who these deceivers are. So if you're thinking, how are they deceiving? Who are these people? Well, they are people who are specifically coming in and twisting the incarnation of Christ. So let me set the scene, all right? The incarnation of Christ, what is that? What that means is that Jesus, the Son of God, who is God, right? Trinitarian God, so he's the second person of the Trinity. He came and was born and became man. So he is 100% God and 100% man. But here's the thing. A lot of people were thinking that Jesus Christ came and he was just like spirit or he wasn't man. He was just God. He was just spirit. They're twisting who he is. But get this, if you lose the humanity of Jesus Christ, then he actually can't save us because we need that perfect human to live the perfect life that us humans could never live because we're flawed and we're sinful, right? To stand in our place, live that perfect life and, and take the wrath for our sins and die the death that we deserve. And so whenever they're teaching against the incarnation of Christ, what they're actually saying is, is heretical. It's a heresy. You cannot believe that and be saved. Jesus has to be man to save us. So these deceivers are actually speaking heretical things. Um, that is a core doctrine of Christianity. If you do not believe in the incarnation of Christ, you cannot truly be a Christian. So he's confessing. Now get this right here, just so you're not confused. This word coming, it doesn't mean that Jesus is coming later. So this is actually a past tense of coming. So it means that he has come in the flesh. But they do not confess this. So such a one, and what is the one? This one is the deceiver, making those connections, is the deceiver, it says it again right here, and the antichrist. So I just want to slow down real quick because that's a big word. That's a scary word. And 2 John also wrote 1 John. And so we're going to look at some of the scriptures in 1 John. He says 1 John 2, 18 and then verse 26. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard 
that Antichrist is coming. So now many, many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that is the last hour. And in verse 26, he says, I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. So in his first book, 1 John, he identifies the Antichrist as not just being one person, but being a group of people. It says many Antichrists have come. And in verse 26, it says that they're trying to deceive you. So this deceiver and this Antichrist right here is the same person, but it's not a particular person the way that we might read it and think. This right here is actually speaking, the deceiver and the antichrist is speaking about really a category of persons. So if somebody comes, preaches a false Christ, deceives people away from the true Christ, they would be put into the category of antichrist. Anti literally means against. Christ, against Christ. You'd be against Christ. What should we do? He's going to tell us right here. He stops, he starts with verse 8 and he says, Watch yourselves so that you may not lose what we have worked for, but win a full reward. So, what we should do first, it says, Watch ourselves. If we come on, if we continue in verse 9, it says, Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching. So he's telling us also, secondly, to abide in the teaching. This is the sound biblical teaching of the true Christ. If anyone comes to you and does not bring your teaching, do not receive him. So the third thing he's telling us to do is do not receive this deceiver, this heretical person who is preaching against the incarnation of Christ. Do not receive him or give him any greeting, which would kind of go along with the receiving. Like, don't treat him like an equal. Don't don't treat him like you're okay or her. Mm -hmm. Like you're okay with what's going on. This is what we should do. One, watch yourself. Two, abide and continue on in the true teachings of Scripture. And three, do not receive this person. Well, let's start with one. Watch yourselves. What does that mean to watch yourself? So this watch yourself is connecting to abiding in the teaching. So one of the ways that we watch ourselves is to know good doctrine and continue in it. But this word abiding right here implies that you already know truth. So if you're not in the word of God and you're not learning from great men and women of God and you're not listening to sermons and reading your Bible and studying and attending Bible studies and being discipled and being mentored, you are not going to know these teachings in order to abide in it. So first you got to start by knowing and then you continue to abide in them. This is how we watch ourselves. We look around and we say, is this person on TV or this person on YouTube or this person in my church preaching what I see consistent with scripture and what I've learned from scripture? But so now we, we know what to do. And then let's say we realize, wait a second, they're not. They're teaching something contrary to scripture. They might be the deceiver that the scripture talks about. They might be um, in that category of antichrist, which honestly, I don't use that word a lot in my everyday life. I don't think I, I don't remember the last time I said it before the scripture, just because it brings a lot of baggage and it brings a lot of confusion and people want to like make one per, it's just like, it's a big deal. So I choose not to use that. I'd rather use like a false preacher or a deceiver or just a person who preaches heresy or a heretical person. Um, I prefer not to use the word antichrist. It just has a lot of baggage. But let's say you realize that they are that person and they are doing that. Well, what are we supposed to do right here? Do not receive him or give him any greeting. If somebody asks you what you think about this person, gently and lovingly point them to the truth. Here's what they preach wrong. Here's what they preach about God. Here's what they preach wrong about Christ and his people and the church and whatever it may be. And here's what scripture actually says and help people to see that if it comes up in conversation, um, I wouldn't say make your main mission in life to be somebody who points out deceivers um, because then really quick, 
our mission becomes less about the gospel of Christ and getting people to see who Christ is and more so focused on getting to see the bad people. And that's not what we're called to do. That'll come along the way and, you know, speak up about it. But that should not be your main mission in life is to go into every YouTube comment and type, this person is... No, like spend that time discipling somebody. Spend that time preaching the word, going out and evangelizing or um, serving your church. Spend, spend more time doing that. So don't hear me to say, start being a crazy person. What, it, what are the blessings and what are the, the good things of the Lord that comes out of obeying this? Watch yourselves so that you may not lose what you've worked for. We may win a full reward. Well, what does that mean? One of the graces and one of the means by which Christ keeps us in him is through watching ourselves and abiding in the teaching so that we don't lose what we've worked for, a full reward. What is this full reward that it's talking about? We will, the full reward is that one day we get to see Christ in his fullness, in his glory, not just through the word, not just from history, not just in our personal prayer time and whenever we're, you know, our personal relationship. It's more than that. We are going to have eternity with Christ face to face. Now you keep away from deceivers so you can keep on the path that leads you to see Christ face to face. Because if you become deceived and you fall away, from Christ, you don't get to have that eternal life. It's only through the true Christ that we get that. So we want to win our full reward. And this word win does not mean that we work really hard to stay saved. Now, I do not want you to hear me say that at all, right? The only, We are saved by grace through faith. Only Christ saves us. But this is really just painting a picture. You've seen it in other places in scripture, like press on to win this race. Like our Christian walk is described as a race a lot. And what he means by win doesn't mean that we do something to win Christ, but just that what a victory at the end of our lives that we pressed on in this race of life, however hard it may be, despite the deceivers, And we made it to the end. We have our full victory and our full reward in eternity with Christ. That's what this word win means. It's kind of painting like a picture of like at the end of your life, you get this trophy. You get this good job. Well done, my faithful servant. Come and see Christ face to face. This is what we're pressing on to. Another blessing that we get to continue to abide in whenever we keep ourselves away from deceivers is that we get to have the Father and the Son. So this whole section right here, I'm just going to read it again. So good. I don't want to miss it. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. You know what that tells us right there? That if you do not have Christ, you do not have God. The Son of God is the only way to God, the only way to the Father, the only way to eternity, eternal life, um, salvation. And so we can't just say, you know what, I don't really believe that like Jesus is the Christ, I don't really believe in his incarnation, but like I read the God of the Old Testament and I'm with that God. Even the Old Testament saints, right? Abraham, for example, Moses, for example, they were looking forward to a coming Christ. They had access to the Father in relationship with the Father and eternal life because of Christ still, even though he hadn't come yet. They're looking forward to Christ and they're saying, I believe one day in a Messiah that will save the world from its sins. And they're putting their faith in that future Messiah, and that's how they have the Father. So this isn't a new concept. All throughout Scripture, Christ is the only way to God. Christ is the only way to the Father. Um, And so he's saying, stay away from these heretical teachers because they're preaching to you a false Christ. And you can't have God with that Christ. You can't have eternal life with that Christ. But on the flip side, right here what I had in pink, whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. So you have the Father and the Son, or you have nothing. You cannot have the Father without the Son. So number one, we get to win that full reward. And number two, we get to have relationship with both.
the Father and the Son for all of eternity. Such a beautiful thing. Now, what happens to believers or people in the church if they are persuaded by these deceivers and if they follow these false preachers? What happens if we don't listen? What happens if we don't abide in the teaching? If we, if we do receive them? Well, let's take a look. What does scripture say? We just went over one of them. If you do not abide in the teaching of Christ, you do not have God. You aren't saved. So just like literally no salvation. Do not follow deceivers or you will not, you will prove to not be saved. That's a whole nother thing, but I'll just say this. No salvation. I don't want to get into a whole nother topic of like eternal security and all of that. But I do believe in eternal security and scripture tells us in multiple places all over that if you turn out to not be saved, you are never saved. So don't do it. Secondly, for whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. Would you ever think that promoting a person that is a false preacher is actually taking part in their work? And maybe that's been you in a past time whenever you didn't realize these false preachers were preaching falsely and you've, you know, retweeted their tweets or reposted their videos or shared their content or even verbally retaught what they taught you. That's taking part in their works. It's helping to spread their false ideologies of who Christ is. And so really, we need to be firm on who we truly believe are false preachers because we do not want to take part in their works. We don't want to share them with others and have others think that's like, we're cool with them, we're okay with them. Um, We need to be firm on that because at the end of the day, what's on the line is the truth of who Christ is. And it may sound harsh, but we live in America and in this day and age we live in, oh, that sounds so harsh, but look, he's saying it blatantly right here. He's expecting these believers to abide by this and and it's not harsh. So don't let our culture and this like pandering, like, yeah, we should be kind, we should be gentle, but we shouldn't be so pandering to everybody's feelings that we're afraid to stand up for the true Christ. So just be careful of that. And then finally, right at the end, we have the end greeting of 2 John. Though I have much to write you, I'd rather not use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to come to you and talk face to face so that our joy may be complete. Actually, something really interesting about this is what he's saying is, I want to come to you. I'd rather be with you. I don't, I wish I didn't have to write these things to you. But think about how important it is that these people would not be deceived and help deceivers that he didn't wait until he came and saw them. He's like, I need to write a letter now. These churches need to be aware now and need to be on guard now and need to be reminded to abide in these truths now because that's how much he cared about them. And that's how serious this issue is. He didn't just wait until he saw them again. He wrote them a letter. The children of your elect sister greet you. This is just some of the same language um, as before. The children are just Christians of your elect sister, that is, think of it as like a sister church, greet you. So he's like, other believers that go to other churches, I talk to them about you, and and they prob- they might even know one another. Again, we don't know specifically who these churches were that he's writing to, but he's just saying, they greet you, and they warm welcome, they think of you, they love you. Um, and that's how he ends his letter. So I hope this was helpful. I know it can be a pretty intense topic, um, but... When it comes to who Christ is, we have to stand for truth. We have to know the truth and we have to guard the truth so that we're guarding our full reward. We're guarding our eternity, seeing Christ face to face. Um, I love you guys. If you have any questions, put them below. And next week, we're going to be starting 3rd John. It'll be three weeks in 3rd John, and that will be the end of 2nd and 3rd John. I love you and see you soon.